So, um, if we go to the next slide, how do we make nine months work? Because that's really what, what's important. Uh, as soon as the Minister makes his direction, we have an early board meeting and we try to get a uh, timetable and directions from the board at that time. Obviously, it's difficult because we don't know how many submissions we're going to get and there's a difference between getting 60 and 600 and how long a hearing may take. As I said, we have public meetings on process. Um, we provide regular updates and communication, so we do that through our website. Um, and while we haven't used it yet, we can also do it through Twitter, apparently. <laughs> Um, we're trying to be as technologically savvy as possible. Um, and our hearing processes. Um, we're working with the environment court, principal environment court judge at the moment to try and narrow down just how these hearings might run to try and get some consistency um, rather than um, leave it to the preferences of individual boards. Um, and an example of that is making sure that evidence is pre-read. Um, that makes a huge difference to how long a hearing takes. Um, so we try to do that, um, and for Tohara, the board's uh, minute and direction says that cross-examination must be limited to, I think it's two hours uh, per witness, um, so each party has two hours of cross-examination per witness, openings must only take four hours and closings only four hours. So the judge is being uh, quite specific there in trying to limit the amount of time that the hearing takes because we certainly do have the complication of Christmas in the middle. Um, we obviously want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to be heard um, and, and get this done within nine months. And also we commission the Section 149G report, so the key issues report from local authorities. We commission that as early as possible. So uh, we're usually commissioning that in between the Minister's uh, direction and when we notify because we like to have that in by the time submissions close, because what that key issues report is not required to do is to consider submissions. So if we get that early, then we have a basically a, a position from the local authorities at the early time, which means that that gives direction to the applicants and the submitters as well. You're vulnerable there though, aren't you? If local authority drags its heels, your buck ticks. <laughs> we are. Um, I guess the way that we manage that is through our contracting Obviously, we're paying for the service. Um, you know, we try to make sure that they have as much notice as possible and they're lined up as possible. Obviously, too, it's important that whoever the author of that report is is um, in the position where they could be an expert witness. So um, we have a number of criteria. You know, it's not the kind of report that you would expect to see written um, by by a graduate, for example. So we have all of those criteria that we talk about and negotiate with the local authority when we set up the contract. Yeah, but you're quite right, it is a risk to us and to the process. Um, but at this point in time, it's been working, so we're lucky. Okay, so um, just a little bit about our current and confirmed projects. We have the Tohara uh, Geothermal Power Station uh, project, and that, uh, the hearing for that starts in September. Um, Waterview Connection publicly uh, announced last week that they are about to launch with us um, around. Um, it's from mid-August this year. <coughs> That's a large New Zealand transport um, agency uh, roading project in Auckland, 4.5 kilometres of tunnel, um, impacts um, a number of um, residential houses. And also Transmission Gully has publicly announced that they intend to come to us um, as well, which is another NZTA application. At the moment as well, we're managing call-ins on behalf of the Ministry, uh, the Turitia Wind Farm, so the mighty uh, and Power Wind Farm in Harmston North, and also uh, a wind farm in Raglan for contact energy. And there are a number of projects in discussion with us um, at various stages, some in pre-launchment um, that aren't really public yet, but we are certainly having conversations around energy, further roading, um, the roads of national significance through the NZTA are a regular um, topic of conversation, some black box development and plan change. So we've got a bit coming in our direction. Um, I guess if I could leave you with one message about the EPA, it would be if you think that you have something that might be coming in our direction, talk to us early. Um, we're more than happy to engage with you. We will come to you. You don't necessarily need to come to us. Um, but that's really important because that's how we make the process work. So thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. Shall we uh, just go to the floor and see if anyone has any questions? We'll take two or three. Yeah. Can I ask two questions? So the first question is um, the limited time frame. What was the rationale for having a limited time frame? It's just part A, and then part B is why nine months? No, right. No, I have a second question. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the first question first. Um, that came out of this, it was basically uh, a large number of people saying, oh, this is um, it was um, initially uh, seven, was on the table, seven months, um, and, and it was made nine. Um, not sure why it was calendar months, not working days, but um, that's where it came from, the very last. But what was the rationale for having a time frame? The rationale, basically because, um, the other key thing I should have said is we're a one step process. So nine months, bang, you get your answer. And you're not, um, you can only go and appeal on high court. Um, matters and courts of law, so you're not going to the environment court. Um, and the idea around it is we have proposals of national significance that, um, you know, historically from time to time get tied up in a lot of litigation and these things, you know, can take a lot of time. I've heard nightmare the stories of 12 years for consenting for some things. Um, and this is a way of getting a decision. Mm -hmm. Now, the second question is, you mentioned 18 staff and possibly yes. recruiting. I'd be interested to know, uh, are they mainly administrative staff or do they have specialist staff? No. Or, um, um, as much as it appears that like we do a large amount of what you would call administration, mm -hmm. um, they have a variety of skills. Most of my staff are qualified planners. Uh, most of them um, have some other kind of background as well. Um, my project managers are uh, Prince 2 trained, um, and then I, I've recruited from mostly local government, although um, some are SOEs, and um, they have a range of planning skills and experience, particularly working on large projects, and a number of them have experience in large projects in the UK environment as well. Great, thank you. Thank you. What do you do with the contacts you receive on the 0800 numbers? Are they diverted to the applicant or...? Oh, right. No. Um, we, I mean, we're operating an 0800 number all the time. Mm. Um, and though we get questions all the time from various people, and we, we try basically a 24-hour turnaround for those, so we will answer those directly. Um, obviously, if it's something that we can't answer and it requires um, a ministerial or something like that, we'll advise you of that. Um, and then for the individual applications, the 0800 number is serviced and answered by the project leader. So where they can help you, they will, um, unless it's something that is perhaps applicant specific and then they will make sure that you get the answers that you need. Um, but so far it works well. Um, it's something that we've um, had for a while because we've been doing it for Collins as well and it generally does work quite well. Um, and submitters do definitely use it, particularly in close to hearing. So the, the people calling, does the applicant have access to no. that kind of information no, at all? No, they do not. No. no. So, so it's... So it's a relationship all. between the EPA and the caller. And if EPA chooses an agreement with the caller, they could contact that? They could if that was necessary. Yeah. Can you please let me elaborate on EECs? Oh, um, not terribly much, no, because it's <laughs> at this stage it's not, probably not much more than a concept, but it's certainly um, something that uh, the government is considering um, in terms of how it might control, um, basically envi having environmental control over that sort of zone between the 12 mile limit and the 200 mile limit. But RMB, RMB doesn't act like that? No, right. it's not. The RMA um, <coughs> extends out to the 12 mile limit currently. Any other questions? I have one. Just uh, I'm not a panel. What's the black box development? <laughs> 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 okay. Um, basically, it's a development uh, where we might know the bulk and height sort of um, requirements for it, but we don't know much about how it will be laid out, um, if you like. So. Yeah, it's one of those situations where, yes, we can tell you it'll be this big and this wide, this high, um, and it's for a specific purpose, but in terms of layout, um, we are fine. Do you have an example? Oh, I mean, I guess an example would be, and it's certainly not the example like we have, but 
you know, if you were thinking about a large shopping complex and you might know the footprint of it, but very little else. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering about EPA2 and what this, what's the program and the when are things going to happen? There are things like the EZ and the oh, right. legislation. Um, the, uh, the program is that EPA2 will be up and running by the 1st of July 2011. Um, so obviously there is already a, a stream of work um, to look at how that works and how those agencies and ourselves fit together. Um, and um, yes, the, the timetable for the legislation, it's really outside of of my understanding because it's not um, it's a separate part of the ministry that's looking after EPA phase 2 um, which sounds funny but they're doing the policy kind of side of it if you like whereas we're, we're operational so we're looking at how do we make this work what systems will we use and that sort of thing mm. yeah. I notice there's no monetary value as to uh, the decision whether or not to go to the EPA uh, why is that? is that so? I would imagine some projects are just too small to... Mm. to oh, right. Offer. Okay. Um, I guess that's, a, that's an applicant decision. Um, the process is such that it, you, know, you can't make an apples with apples comparison. So you can't look at it and say, okay, it's going to cost me you know, 50000 to go to the local <coughs> authority and it's going to cost me X amount to go to the EPA because we're a one-step process, which means that you've got to combine what the potential cost would be to an applicant of going through a council process and then relitigating through the environment court to, to get to where you know, something equivalent might be. Um, so it's, it's very cost dependent. It depends on the size of the project, it depends on the complexity of the project. Um, you know, for example, there's a difference in cost between um, the geothermal power station to the roading project. And that's largely because of the, the more extensive range of um, technical considerations and input and environmental effects that you get with the roading project in an urban environment as opposed to a geothermal power station in what's largely a rural environment. So um, the other thing that impacts cost, obviously, is the, the amount of submitters you get. Um, to hire got roughly 16. Um, so that's not an unmanageable amount. Um, I'm sure that some of you probably um, are aware of the cost estimate that was issued for the Mackenzie Cows, but we were talking, they already had nearly 5,000 submissions on the door. So if you've got to manage 5,000 submissions as opposed to 60, there's obviously going to be a cost of reach. Um, and that does have a part to play in it. Let's take a couple more if there are any. Anybody else got any questions? Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs>